Okay, so if you've come this far, I'm guessing you know the motivation for captivating one of your lecture videos. What you're asking now is, how do I actually do it? How do I captivate a lecture video given one? Well, we have to have something to work with in our lesson here. So I've come up with a very short lecture uh, as fodder to work with. But I want you to note, first of all, I hope it's a good example of, it's a, it's a math lecture that maybe these math lectures aren't quite as exciting and interesting as we math teachers think they are, first of all. Uh, hence the need for the captivating. Uh, I hope you'll see, as m most lectures should have, there, there are some obvious logical breaks uh, which we will need if we're going to put this into Captivate. Uh, I hope this is a good example of that as well. Between those breaks, uh, I'm going to pause, and I suggest if you're doing a lecture, right between any logical break, pause, and you'll see why in the future. Okay? And also, uh, always give, a, as we would in any lesson, give a lead into the next concept. I'm trying to give you an example of that also. We'll do that when we're recording. Okay? See if you can see how many concepts, I'm hoping it's obvious, are in the following presentation. Okay, let's take a look. Let's review some basic shapes as a means to learn this software. We'll start with a circle. You know what the definition of a circle is? A circle is not just some round thing. It's a shape consisting of all the points in a plane that are a given distance from a given point, that given point being the center. That seems awful complicated for what we know as a circle, but if you think about it and you go from the center out a certain distance and put a point, and maybe from the center go the same distance but a different direction, and if we go in every direction that same distance and place a point every direction, can't do it all today, and we collect all those points that are that given distance, we of course have a circle. And by the way, the center is not included in that circle because he's not that distance. He's zero distance from him. Okay, so that's basically the definition of a circle. Let's look at some sided figures. We'll start with the triangle. Definition of a triangle is a plane, a flat if you would, figure with three straight sides and three angles. You probably knew that. There are special triangles. For instance, if all three sides are equal, we have an equilateral triangle. And if there's a 90 degree angle amongst them, there can only be one, or it wouldn't be a triangle, we call it a right triangle. Ha happens very often in construction. So if we go from three sides to four sides, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about, you thought I was going to say square, didn't you? We're talking about a quadrilateral. If all we're saying is it has four sides, the only thing we know of this figure, as you see, has four sides. It's a quadrilateral, a polygon with four edges and four vertices. Happens to have four angles, of course. Now, if those four angles are 90 degree angles, you know it, a quadrilateral with four 90 degree angles as a rectangle. Now, if that rectangle has all four of the sides the same, and, of course, to be a rectangle, it had 90 degrees at each corner. It would be, as you know, a square. That A square is a very, very special quadrilateral. So there's your review of basic shapes. So what I've done now is I've taken this long lecture, recorded it, of course, as a MP4 or some sort of video file, and here it is. I call it basicshapes.mp4, and using an editor, I broke it into the three logical parts, circles, quadrilaterals, and triangles. Probably most people will record those three separate 
mid uh, sub lectures, if you would, separately. I, I I make so many mistakes that I have to do them and then combine them if I wanted to also uh, using the Captivate. So either way, but we're going to have to have before we start getting into Captivate, we're going to have to have these sub lecture files, if you would, that are video files. Now let's get into Captivate. So we'll go into, usually it's in a folder called Adobe, and this one's Adobe Captivate, and I'll start it up. It's a huge software, so it takes a while to load. And what I'm about to show you probably is one thousandth of what this software can do. But let's say we're going to start a new file. We're going to start with a blank project, and let's see what we got. Okay, let's go. Now this software is a lot like PowerPoint in that your production is divided into slides. Uh, they have what they call the film strip over here on the left, that's your slides. Uh, before we start working with those, let's get ourselves comfortable uh, in, a, in a good uh, Zoom, if you would. What I would suggest you would probably do every time, we're going to need something that's not in PowerPoint called the timeline. If we click down on the bottom and click on the word timeline, it'll show us the timeline and we'll be talking about in, the, uh, in, in a minute. But since we brought the timeline up, we're probably zoomed in too close. So I'm going to uh, kind of have it set the zoom properly for us. I'm going to go up to view in the menu and magnification. And I am this lazy, I don't want to guess, so I'm going to say, give me the best fit based on what I have on the screen right now. And there you go, I'm going to get nice. So that's kind of the way I'd like to be set before I even begin. Now this, as you may recall, is going to have three uh, slides, uh, one for circles, one for uh, quadrilaterals, and one for triangles. But we're going to have need those three, but we're always going to have a a title slide and I'm going to suggest to you an ending slide. So we're going to have five slides in this production. Uh, the middle three are going to be the videos and we'll uh, create those. But let's start with what we call the title slide and put some sort of a title in here. Okay, so I'll double click on that. And as soon as I double click on any object, it's going to open up a pane uh, P-A-N-E, of all the formatting options for that object, okay? And I'm sure you can figure that out. I'm not going to go through all of them. You know, the, the, the font, the size, the various things. Let's just put in the name for this, okay? And we we'll could change the color and all sorts of things, but, but we're not going to do that today, okay? And I'll click out of that. And now you have a title slide. And you have to have a way to get to the uh, next slides, the videos. And this is where it's going to get very interesting for you. Let's uh, create something that uh, basically PowerPoint, well, PowerPoint has it, but it doesn't have it. Most people don't know this. And that's going to be a button that allows you to advance. The buttons is always going to be under the menu Interactions. So if you go to the button bar here where it says interactions, you see there's all kinds of interactions that I'm not gonna, gonna teach you. I'm only gonna teach you the button. So we're gonna select the button and come down and son of a gun, it puts a button. It didn't know where to put it, put it right in the middle. And I'm gonna drag that over here. And just like uh, the text shapes, it opened up a pane to format the button. And I'm going to take a minute just to do that. Now, what would I want that button to say? Most of the time, I'm going to go to the caption. I could click in it, but I'm going to go to the, the caption right here, and I'm going to have that say the word continue. So when the person clicks on it, they will continue. And I certainly want it bigger than that. So I'll come down here and maybe make the font, I don't know, 45. Okay, and when I do that, and click over here, I see that it's way bigger, and I'm going to, okay, move it around, resize it, and there's, I can change the color, I can change, let me just do that real quick, just for a laugh, okay, 
Okay, so that's a, and but there's so many options you can change, and I'm not going to take the time to do that. So I have this button, the continue button, and I suggest you to always have it in the same place all the time. That way, the user will always know where it's going to be, and they won't be surprised uh, when it pops up at basically at the end of every video. Put it anywhere you want, but put it at the same place. Okay, now. Let's go to our next slide. Well, now it's not going to be a title slide. We're going to use the insert menu up top here, fourth one, insert, new slide. Okay, and I want this one to be a blank one. And there goes the blank. Now, the blank one, basically, all I need on it is a video, except I also need a button. And I have already created a button. So what I'm going to go up here to the previous slide, select that, copy it and then come down here and paste it and it'll be all, all the work that I've done before you see I won't have to do again in fact what I suggest to you this second slide second third and fourth slide are going to be video slides so I'm going to take that whole slide now and copy it copy and I'm going to paste guess how many I'm going to paste two more so I'm, I'm rolling through this show huh now the last slide is going to be a, a type of basically a title slide it's going to have a code on it that the person can give me to prove that they did the uh, the uh, whole presentation so I'm going to copy the title slide this time and it's not going to have a button so let me go copy and I'll come down here and paste and there it is last and let me remove well I'll leave it there for now okay but anyway there's my five slide I was gonna I can I can change this the title to to something else later okay so here's my five slides that I quickly have created with buttons okay so now it's time to put in a video on each of these video slides. Let me click on the, what is the second physical slide or the first video slide, okay? And let's insert a video. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to come up to probably the, one of the most important uh, menu items, and that is under video, okay? Video, and I'm going to say every time, I'm going to say video, insert video and it's going to go whoa, 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 whoa. where do you want this video and what kind of a video how do you want it handled and such like this well every time if you want to do this uh, the way I do it anyway uh, you're going to select multi-slide synchronize even though it's only going to be on one slide you're going to select multi-slide synchronized video that's because it gives you uh, the different options when you make it multi-slide Okay, the first thing we have to do is tell it where this video is. So I'll browse out on the C drive where I have these stored. I happen to have it stored in something called Captivate Training. And I guess it makes sense that the first one I'm going to have is the one on circles. Okay, and I'll say open. Okay, now the other thing. I don't want it to distribute across multiple slides. I only want it to accommodate this slide. So it's going to have to make this slide exactly as long as the video is. And it can do that if I click on Modify Slide Duration to accommodate video. Okay, now when I do that, well, you're going to see the timeline. All this stuff down here is going to change. Okay, but you don't got to worry about it because it's going to be automatic. Okay, so we'll do that and click on OK and boom everything changed didn't it okay now my zoom is not very good here because I can't see what's going on so I'm gonna go up to change my view my magnification make it uh, much smaller I don't know I'll make it 66 uh, I need it to be even smaller uh, let me go fit okay and let's see I guess I guess it's good but I, I want to see the whole thing. So I'm going to go view, magnification. I'm going to make it real small. There we go, three. Okay, and I can see. Okay, 
Now, you don't see the button anymore, do you? That's because what's going on, now let's come down to our timeline. Our timeline kind of shows you where things are three-dimensionally and where they are four-dimensionally. You see where it lists what each of these items on your slide. There's the whole slide, there's the button itself, and there's the video that I just inserted. Now, notice that the button is underneath the slide video. So if I grabbed it and moved it up here, it would be above it. So you see what I'm talking about, three-dimensional? Okay, if I move it down here, it's underneath. Okay, so the kind of the z-axis, if you would, is going from top to bottom here, but I want it on top. Okay, now the other thing about the timeline, and this is where it's very different from PowerPoint, is that it's four-dimensional. Four-dimensional. What are you calculus weenies know that the fourth dimension is not X, Y, or Z, but time. Okay? And these length out things here are what's going on and how long they're going. Apparently this slide video is 69.9 seconds, it's telling me, as is the slide itself because it accommodated that. Well, I, I don't want the button to come up until the video is over. So what I have to do, and you'll have to do this a lot, is drag... Oop, I dragged it down. Got to keep it up top. It's going to take a while. Drag it. See how I'm dragging it to the end of the video. Now, maybe there's an automatic way to do this, but I cannot find it. <laughs> okay. Now, I went too far. So I see how far... Now, what I'm trying to show you here is the button comes on in the last second after the end of the video, which is this middle stripe here, okay? And that slide is basically done. But I, uh, I see that uh, the button's on top, but it's not going to be on top until the video is over. Now, the way buttons work, when the user goes to run this video... The button will come up, as you see, at the end of the video, and it will wait till either hell freezes over or the user clicks on continue. That way they can't start the video and go to the kitchen for a sandwich and come back. They, they, they have to click every once in a while and pay attention to the lecture. That's the point of, of basically, of Captivate. Okay, now let me go through that process one more time quickly on the next slide, the next video, which will be the second video, okay? It's the third slide, but the second video slide, if you would. So I click on that slide. It's a blank slide, but it has the button. And let's remember, we go video, insert video, and I want the multi-slide, even though it's only on one slide, and I'll browse. And this time, I don't want circles. This time, my next one is triangles, you may recall. And I always want to modify the slide duration to accommodate the video. I want it to be just as long as the video, and then I'll pop up the button. Okay, so make sure you switch it to that. And I click on that. And it's kind of confusing, isn't it, that it says circle? But remember, the beginning of the triangle uh, video is the uh, end of the circle video. Okay, so I'm going to resize this so that it's correctly on the screen. I still don't see the button, though. Well, where is the button? Look, I think it helped me out and put it at the end. And I'm going to come bring it back. Okay. So now it's at the end. Why am I not seeing it? Because I need to move it up to the top Okay, and now that one will, it'll run the video and then show the button at, it looks like it's at 44 seconds after that. Okay, one more. Assuming your videos are already created, this is what you'll spend most of the time doing, is inserting the videos on slides. So let me do one more quickly so that you know it well. I click on the right slide, which will be our third video slide, our fourth uh, physical slide. And video, insert video. Remember, we want multi-slide synchronized video. We'll browse for, I guess our third video is on quadrilaterals. 
Okay, and don't forget to modify the slide duration and put it in. Now I think we're too big here, so uh, for some reason I guess it made. So if I drag it down, I see that it is way too big. So I'm going to resize this. Make sure that it's in the frame. It's just like any object. Okay. And I see, once again, I don't see the button. That's because the button is below right now. It's below the video. I'll drag it up. You can drag it up later if you want to also. But the most important thing, of course, here is you don't want the button to appear until the video is over. So we'll go in the timeline and drag. You can kind of see your progress down here. We've got a long way to go. Uh, so I'll really jab it to get to the end. And let's see how close to the end I am. There we go. And I'll drag it and just get to the end. Okay, so now I've got that. I've got all three videos ready. And we'll talk about that last slide later. And I think we're ready to see what works. Okay, to do that, we're going to be talking about previewing our show. Well, I show you this previewing idea now because the very next thing we're going to do, you will be at, your, at the mercy of your own uh, creation here. We're about to, after this, we're going to take away the fast forward button and uh, you'll be just like your students. You'll be stuck watching the whole thing. So if you want to preview it, you're going to have to preview you know, every single minute, and you'll have to hit continue and try, st you know, all that stuff. Uh, as it is right now, you can kind of finagle a preview and make sure everything works. Anyway, the place to preview it is right here. You would click on preview, and probably 99% of the time, you're going to preview, depending on how fastidious you are, you're going to uh, preview the whole project, or the, and depending on how you know long the project is, because you can always uh, start to preview it and then hit escape and stop previewing it, kind of a thing, just to make sure it's working. But I show you this now, and uh, I won't do it. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to your homework, and you can try previewing your own project to make sure it works, and you can cheat a little bit and fast forward. Now you can, but our next assignment is to edit the player, which the fancy name for that in a software like this is called the skin. And the skin is going to be subordinate to the menu window. So if we click on window, we're going to go into now the what is the skin editor. And let's take a look at that now. If we click on Window Skin Editor will get a pop-up window. It looks something like this. Of course, it's labeled Skin Editor. And there's a million options. You can see kind of the, the beauty of this is you can see what your project's going to look like as you make the changes. Okay? And two major buttons I want to point out that you definitely want to do, you can play with the other ones, are this first one here called Playback Control and this one here called Table of Contents. Let's start with the absolute most important is the playback control, and that's the default. That's what it comes into because it's the first one. Okay, and you see all these things checked. Well, we need to uncheck stuff. I say to you, you definitely, and that's these little buttons here, we definitely do not want to give your user the forward button. We do not want to give them the fast forward button. And if we didn't take away the progress bar, they could do the same thing with that. So we're going to take that away. So now at this point, the only thing they can do is rewind, jump between playing and uh, pausing, go back, adjust the volume, or get out. If they want to go forward, they have to hit the continue button. And the only way to hit the continue button, as we know, is at the end of each video. So that's very important that you click on those. There's many other options where you can change the colors of these, make them pink on red or whatever, whatever you want to do. But uh, you can play with that later. Now, the only other thing, and it's very, I, some people like it, some people don't, is the table of contents. 
and that's this third button here. Okay, so if I click on that and I say show me a table of contents, I'll click on where it says show me it. Now, right now it's not showing it. Okay, and look, now you get a table of contents and, and, and you have the option of, of editing these, for instance. Okay, well, first thing I would do is, is uh, I want the user to know what they're looking at. So I'm going to edit the text in this. This will be the title slide, if you would. This, you may recall, our first video is circles, so the person knows what they're watching. The next one I'll edit is triangles. You can write anything you want here. Okay, and this is quadrilaterals. If you get too wordy, you're going to have to adjust the uh, font. And you may uh, want to use what I do is a secret code, or I call it the advanced code, because I reference this from uh, a math software, and unless they get the advanced code, they don't get the privilege of doing the homework, because they have to type that in. So that's what that last, so they know what, what they have to to get to that. Okay, now you wouldn't see if I didn't raise this up. That's going to, with the menu, and that's what it looks like now. You can't read it, I bet, but that's the idea. And you could go out right now, and uh, remember we just showed you preview. Of course, you'd be previewing without the fast forward button. You'd have to, you know, do it just like your students do it. Okay, but other things you may want to look at. Uh, I'm going to go down here to settings, and that's the settings for the table of contents. Okay. One of the very important uh, buttons here is uh, I'm going to let people move around, you know, to, to different sections, go from the circle section to the triangle section, etc. But I don't know why they don't default this. Navigate visited site slides only. I'm only going to let you basically move back to something that you've already seen. I'm going to let you go back, okay? That's very important that you click on that one. If you don't, they won't be able to go, uh, they'll only be able to go forward. And at this point, they can't go forward, okay? So we're the only way we're going to let them navigate this thing is if they go backward and they want to re-see something, okay? Um, there's Again, there's many other options most of them are, are color and text and such like that. But that's kind of the idea of what we have here. And when I close out of this, I guess I have to raise up my, I say, OK. And I will exit out of that. I X out of the skin editor. Now let's take a look using our preview at what we've got going here. I'm going to preview the whole project. And it's creating it. And look what we have here. Okay. I'm on the first slide and I can see, you know, what, what I can even see how long each uh, video is or each sub uh, uh, concept is. And I, I'm trying to click on these and it won't let me because I haven't. I can click on continue. Let's review some basic shapes. As a means and as you can see, software. it starts the video. We'll start I still the can't get to triangles. I can pause to take notes, but I can't get to the next one until I see this whole video. And of course, at the end of the whole video, the continue button will come up and I'll be able to move to the next one. Okay, and I'll have to continue, as you know, all the way through to the advanced code to get the privilege of doing the homework. So that's pretty cool. Let's get out of preview. And we're back in. Of course, this would be a good time to save. <laughs> so I'm going to file, save. Now here's a subtle concept that I have to get across. What we just saved is the Captivate project. We're about to use the publish command to create the Captivate presentation that your students will be watching and you will be watching. Okay, they do it that way. You want to save both, but uh, they do it that way because you may decide that you want to change the colors or you may want to just change that you're going to let them use the uh, fast forward button or whatever. Okay, 
So in that case, you would come back into your project file and republish and create another presentation uh, version of this, if you would. Now, the way to publish is so easy. I just want to show you it. It would be under the File command, File, and I'd come down to Publish. And I would just, for our purposes, like what I'm showing you, I'm sure there's a million other ways to do this, but uh, I'm going to Publish. Now, it's going to open up this window, and you've got to make sure of a couple things. It's, I, it's going to, your, your project title is, is going to be the same name as the folder it's going to create. Let's leave it on Publish to Folder, because it's going to create way more than a couple files. It's going to be a whole bunch of files. You want, they'll all be in the right place in a folder. But you also have to tell it where to put that folder. You're not telling it the name of the folder. The name of the folder is going to be the project title. I'll show you in a minute. But you're going to tell it where to go. And I would do that. Uh, for In our case, it's on my C drive under Bill Witte Captivate Training so that I know where to find it. And I'll show you it in a minute. Make sure that you've selected both the Swift and the HTML. They're both dark. Make sure that you select full screen and you may have to do this over and over again so may, if, if there's if you did it again to tell it to redo over the old slides okay the other thing that's important is to make sure that you use I would say the oldest flash player because if the person has a newer flash player it'll still work but if you pick the newest flash player and they only have the oldest flash player, it won't work. So I don't know why anybody would use a newer flash player unless they're trying to be a jerk. Okay, so always use the oldest flash player, and we'll click on Publish, and it's going to do a lot of work for me, but I'll know where to look. It's going to be in C, Bill Witte, Captivate Training, and it's going to be called Shapes. Let me publish. said it completely completed it successfully do I want to look at the output and that would be like reviewing I'm not going to do that right now because I'm so interested in showing you the file so I'll say no and let's go to our file manager and look at this place where we have all you know the place this is C Bill Witte Captivate Train this is the folder that I, I had all these things now this file right here is my project if I needed to redo it uh, which I do, I'm going to reopen that project and then republish. The publishing created this folder called Shapes. And if we open up Shapes, we see all this stuff that it created. You don't got to get all worried. What, the one you have to worry about is it's called index.html. And if you reference index.html from a browser, I'll start it. Son of a gun, it will start, as we told it, to start full screen, it will start my project. Okay, so that's the one you would reference, just all the, the whole folder, and then reference from a link the, the uh, file called index.html. Okay, let's get out of there. And I just noticed something that... If we go back to our project, son of a gun, when the student gets to the end, they're supposed to get the magic code, and they didn't get it. They're going to be awful mad, okay? So at the end, let me republish this. Good thing I saved this project file. I'm going to get rid of the button because they have nowhere to go. Uh, that last uh, slide. I'm going to select that and delete it. And then I'm going to put in what I typically do is some magic code. Uh, drink your Ovaltine. Or, uh, let's see, X453VG. Okay, I don't think they're going to copy that one. And now I need to, of course, republish it. So I'll go File, Publish. 
going to put it on the same place, going to overwrite the old one, I'm going to leave all the same settings and publish. It says you it already exists. Do you want to re-overwrite it? Yes, I do. Copying assets. That's it's it's copying all the files, the video files, the skin files, all those files. And this time we'll have our project. Let's look at it by referencing in the folder called shapes the file called index.html and there you go now notice of course it's a skin that we created that's not the fast forward button is it that's the play button and it alternates between play and and pause you can only go backward I can't go to any of these until I watch each and every one you via the continue button which is at the end of each video and then when they get to the end they'll know the code to put in or tell you or print out or whatever you wish now uh, a couple other things I want to add at the end here and that is as your students are going through these captivate presentations um, they can stop they can go through triangles say and then stop and, and, and uh, come back an hour later and it'll the computer even if they turn the computer off it'll save their progress but it'll save it on that computer so if a compu uh, if a student emails you and says gosh darn it this thing is making me restart the class over and over again it's because they probably switched to a different computer okay if they stay on the same computer it'll pick up right where it left off uh it won't be able to go go forward but they can uh they can you know go backward or whatever but they must watch the videos and and hit continue every once in a while and they must go to the end of the class i hope that helps if you have any uh questions by all means uh don't hesitate to email me good luck